A lot of people talk about their gear when it comes to preparing for a through hike. Although this is important, gear isn't hiking you to your destination. I'm going to take you through a two-part mini-series about my physical and mental preparation. So hiking is going to be the number one thing that I'm going to be doing. You can't really train for hiking without hiking. I'm gonna follow that purple line. So what happens if you can't go hiking every single day? You're going on a hike this way. Well, I either go on walks or rucks. I've talked about rucking a little bit on this channel, but rucking is probably gonna be the closest thing to preparing for the trail. Um, it's gonna get you really comfortable wearing a backpack and putting weight on your shoulders. Rucking is not my favorite thing in the world to do, but you know, sometimes you just gotta do it. Walking, it's pretty simple. I will bring my dog, Bailey. Um, we'll go and I'll pop in an audiobook and just kind of head outside and just get as far as I can. Sometimes I have a set mileage, sometimes I just do it because I just wanna listen to my audiobook and I need to walk. Yeah, this is kind of what it is, just walking my dog. One of the things that I don't do to prepare for any type of hiking or backpacking trip um, is running. Now, I used to do this when I was a lot younger and I was preparing for either like a backpacking trip or um, a hiking trip. Now, I'm not saying that if you are running to prepare for a hike that you are doing it all wrong. I mean, in the end, the biggest thing is just to get outside and to get mileage or just kind of prepare in any way that you feel comfortable with. Watch this comparison of me walking and running. It's obvious I haven't been practicing good form. I'm bounding more and my body is taking a lot more impact when I'm running. Again, if you are a runner, this may be a different story for you. But if you're not, this is why I don't recommend running for training. For weight training, I like to do circuits, um, doing full body uh, days and not necessarily breaking it up. I really just need two days, maybe three to kind of help build up that strength. Um, but other than that, I really try not to focus so much on weights and how heavy I'm lifting just because I really don't need to put on a whole lot of strength. The biggest thing is I want to build muscle endurance, not so much hypertrophy or strength. Yoga is the last thing that I do for uh, any type of training. I like this mainly because I enjoy doing it. I would say it's more of a mental thing and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video. So with recovery, I am huge on it. Um, you can walk and lift and do all these different activities all you want, but it's just gonna go down the drain if you don't recover from it. Sleep you definitely need to make a priority. Um, I try and get about eight to nine hours of sleep, depending on what I'm doing. And I also put in recovery days when I feel like it. If my body is not feeling great, or I'm really tired and I slept like crap, then I make sure that I either take a rest day or kind of like more of an active recovery day, just because I don't wanna push my body so much that it <laughs> either gets injured or I just have a crappy workout and it doesn't really do me any good. Stretching and foam rolling is also going to be a part of my routine. Stretching comes from the yoga like I was talking about earlier, but foam rolling is also a big thing that I like to do. This really does help them recover and just kind of cool and chill out. It also helps with soreness. So uh, definitely something that I like to do on trail, I am planning on bringing like a small little tennis ball to roll up my muscles each day, plus my feet. The last thing that I kind of want to hit on, but I'm going to talk a little bit more in the next video, is this method called the Wim Hof method. It's going to have two parts. There's the breath work side or the breathing exercises, and then there's going to be the cold therapy. Ooh.
I would highly suggest that you check out the documentary in the description below. Um, there's these guys that definitely went on this journey to kind of test out the Wim Hof method. And that's it for part one. So part two is going to be focusing more on the mental side of how I'm preparing. That I would argue is probably more important than the physical side, just because you can be as strong and fast as you want to be or that your body is capable. But if you are not mentally prepared or mentally strong to get from Georgia to Maine, you're not going to get there. So stay tuned for that. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help. Uh, if you are not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And with that, I will see you in part two.